What do you think will be the most important issue for uh, Soto Okanagan and West Kootenai in um, the coming year? Um, well, for for the South Okanagan, I think <clears throat> one of the issues that is on a lot of people's minds is the national park proposal that's moving forward. Uh, I'm, I've been trying to get Parks Canada on the ground to answer. A lot of people have, have questions. Uh, a lot of people have are concerned. I think a lot of those concerns are unwarranted, uh, but it's the unknown. People don't. People are very concerned about change, and especially when it involves land around their homes. And they have, you know, all the reason to to be concerned at, in that level. But I think Parks Canada needs to step up and answer those questions. Uh, and I think they have just put up a website now yesterday where, it, where they. They do uh, answer a lot of those questions, so I think that's uh, one issue locally that's going to happen. On a you know broader scale, there's I think marijuana will dominate the the federal news uh, through the through most of the year. Okay, I was going to ask you a little bit more yeah, about sure. uh, both those questions. You've yep. been quite involved with the National Park mm -hmm. ever since you graduated uh, university. Right. And um, uh, so how do you feel about the way things have gone in the last year with, with the National Park issue? Well, I, on one level, I'm very happy that the federal and provincial governments and, and local uh, First Nations governments have agreed to sit down and start the process of, of creating a park and uh, mapping out where it will be, how, what kind of park it will be. National Park uh, Parks Canada has shown recently that they're very willing uh, to create national parks that aren't in the mold of Bamford, Jasper or Kluwani, you know, these wilderness parks. We have a very different situation here where we have land that needs that protection and uh, would attract uh, tourism and visitors, but it's in a very built-up area, you know, and it'll be a mosaic of land parcels uh, in and around where people live, where people work. There's ranchers that work on that land right now, so we have to create a park that will take uh, those interests into account so that it won't affect the livelihoods of the people that, l that work on that land, and uh, so I'm I'm confident that that process will go ahead uh, in a satisfactory way. I'm glad it's it's starting, and I think at the end of the process, it might be two or three years from now. You know, most people will be happy. I'm sure not everyone will be happy, but I think most people will be very happy and proud to have such a park in in our in our backyard. Some people are very, very strongly opposed, and I think you've had a chance to meet and talk with mm -hmm. some of oh, them. Yeah. What, what has that been like? Uh, it's been, it's been uh, friendly, and uh, you know, I, I know their, the issues that they have. Uh, as I say, some of the issues I think we can fairly easily deal with, if you know. And I'm, Parks Canada has indicated to me that they are, are willing to uh, make this a different kind of park. There are other issues that I think will remain, you know, issues around hunting, uh, you know, use of off-road vehicles, those sorts of things I think are incompatible uh, with most people's ideas of a national park. But so, you know, the people that want the world to stay the same, uh, want to be able to uh, use the land uh, in the way that they've always used for the last 50 years. You know, they there are some people who feel very strong about that, and they they may not like the fact that there's a national park where there's a couple things they can't do anymore. But I think the benefits uh, far outweigh that. You know, the just the the infrastructure of uh, uh, trails and things for local people to do, not just visitors, but for local people, local residents, I think people will be very, very happy with their salt. And you can just, all you have to do is go to other places where parks have been created, people have fought them, and you interview those people years afterwards, and, and many or most of them say, 
you know, I fought that, but I'm, I'm so glad it happened because I, I like those results. And that's what I think will happen uh, as the years progress. But uh, I'm, I'm happy the process has started. And what do you think will be the impact of uh, the marijuana legalization? Well, that's a, a much a cloudier issue, a smokier issue perhaps. Uh, it's, you know, it's something I think most people still want to move forward on, but it's, it's proving to be complicated whether you're looking at how we're going to dispense this marijuana, how, how it's going to be distributed, who's going to sell it, uh, how you can grow it, whether you're growing it for your own personal use or even the, the, the people that are growing it for commercial use. I have uh, people, you know, who want to farm it as, you know, this is a, a farming crop. Uh, if you, it's been grown indoors over the years simply because it's illegal. And so people have always hidden that away. And so it's, it seems that's the natural way to grow it when actually uh, it, it's a lot, makes a lot more sense from an environmental standpoint, from the, how much energy you use, uh, how many chemicals you have to use, it's a lot better to grow it outside. And uh, so the government was very much not in that ballpark when these discussions started, but they're starting to come around and I, I have a lot of constituents who want to get into that uh, aspect. They want to be able to grow marijuana and, and sell it legally uh, and process it properly, Whether and they want to grow it outside and use cooperative farming uh, models. And I think the government's starting to look at those things. So it, it may not happen right away, but uh, it's, I think, you know, this will evolve. And I just hope it doesn't take as long to evolve from when we got rid of prohibition and started selling alcohol again. It was a very long period of time to get to really the, I think, this common sense, sensible way of, of uh, how alcohol is now distributed. Uh, you know, for years there was some very senseless, I think, restrictions and uh, I th I'm hoping that we can move a little f faster forward on marijuana, but we still have to make sure that access for children is is just not there. There has to be a huge uh, education program, especially aimed at young people. Uh, there has to be some way of testing for impairment on the roads. When someone is smoking marijuana, we have no way right now of testing for impairment. We can test to see if they have THC in their blood, but that is completely unrelated to impairment. It's not like alcohol. And so the government is moving ahead with tests that look for THC, and I think those are going to be challenged immediately in the courts, and I don't, I, I'm predicting that those won't stand a court challenge. So we have to come up with a better way of testing for impairment. And people are working on this, but it, it, that won't be ready in time for a July 1st rollout. Any final thoughts on uh, what we can look forward to in 2018? Um, well, again, I th you know, there's important legislation coming forward. I think, as I was mentioning, marijuana, the marijuana legislation as we see how the provinces are going to uh, get into the, the distribution questions. Uh, I've talked to Mike Farnworth, who's the, the point person on the BC side of this, and he's admitting that it's, it's very difficult. They were, I think, happy to get a little more leeway from the federal government on the taxation situation because the federal government will do almost nothing in terms, you know, face almost no new costs, you know, the new costs will come from from both the policing and, uh, you know, all those parts of the distribution equation fall on the provinces, and so they're going to be one shouldering them, the, the cost of this rollout, so they're happy that they're getting more than 50-50 cut of any taxes. And I just hope that 
you know, all those policies will work to solve the original problem this was meant to solve, which is to get marijuana out of the black market, get it away from gangs while keeping it, you know, out of the hands of children. And, uh, you know, it's a difficult balance to make, you know, but that balance involves what the tax, what the taxes are, what the prices are, how it's distributed, you know, to make sure that people won't just keep buying it from their local illegal supplier. And, you know, that's what we don't want. We want it to, you know, be, you know, bought and sold in the public legal way where we can regulate it and where we can get the tax benefits. So it's a complicated situation and it, who knows, it may not happen by the July 1st deadline, but I think it's important that it be done right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Okay, thank you.